This video covers everything you need to know to get started with Vex IQ Robotics. We'll cover navigating around the code editor, pairing up the robot and controller, creating your first program, and finally driving around the robot. To get started, you'll need the Vex Code IQ Editor. There's an online version that lets you do everything from the browser, but I highly recommend downloading the dedicated app instead. It will really simplify things for connecting up with the robot and later down the road for saving and loading projects. Links to both versions though can be found in the description, but I'll be using the dedicated app for this tutorial. Vexcode IQ is a block-based programming language that lets you use these drag and drop blocks for making your code. It's based on the language Scratch, which is used for making games, so if you've used that before, it probably looks very similar. The first thing we'll want to do though before getting started programming is to pair up the brain of the robot to the computer. So I've got the brain module right here. It's not powered on and there's no battery connected. So in order to power it on, we need to slide the battery into the brain and then press the check button to power it on. There's four main buttons that are used for navigating around the menu. There's left, right, check, and this X. The left and right are pretty self-explanatory. They just move around left and right. The check and X buttons you can think of as select and back buttons. Pressing the check button will select the item, so I just went into the drive screen, and then pressing the X button will go back to the home screen. You can also select some of the other things here, like programs, devices, or settings. But for now, in order to connect it up to the computer, the easiest way is to use a USB-C cable and just plug it into this port right here. And with that plugged in, it will now light up green under this brain button. But now that we've got the brain paired up, we can start making our very first program. There's two main sections of the code editor. On the left here, we've got this library with all the different blocks that we can use to write our program, and everything's nice and color-coded too by different sections. On the right here, we have this workspace where we'll actually write our code. For our first program, I'm just gonna drag over this block that says print vex code on brain, and then connect it up to the win started block. This win started block is the starting point of our code, so if any blocks aren't attached to it, they won't be run. So we have to make sure it snaps into place like that, and then our code will be downloaded properly. Once we've got that all set up, we can hit the download button here to send it to the robot brain. It'll ask if we want to save our project. I'm going to say okay. It doesn't really matter what you call it or where you save it, so long as you remember what you call it and where you save it to. So I'm going to save it to this folder I made and just call it my first program. And go ahead and hit save. Once it's been downloaded, you've got two options to run the program. The first option is this run button here right next to the download button. If I click that, it sure enough says vex code on the brain. To stop, I'll just hit the stop button. The other option is to launch it from the brain itself. So if I grab the brain here, I can press the check button to select run. Same thing happens, vex code appears on the screen. It's also worth mentioning that once it's been downloaded to the brain, you can always access it from the programs menu. So if I go out to the home screen, dive into the programs menu, I can see my first program. Sure enough, it's the same project as before. If I wanted to say something else on the screen, let's say instead of vex code, I want to print hello world, and then I click run, something strange kind of happens. It still says vex code. And the reason why is because we haven't re-downloaded the program. Clicking this run button is still running the old version of the program. So anytime we make changes to our code, we have to re-download the project to the brain, and then we can run it, and we'll see our change made, hello world, right on the screen of the brain there. Next, let's have a look at how we can pair the controller so that we can download our code wirelessly. First thing we want to do is hop out into the settings by going to the home screen, heading over to settings, and then going over to this link option. So the link option wants us to press the top left buttons of the controller as well as the power button. So if we grab our controller here, we turn it on, and then we press the top left buttons and the power button, just kind of like that. It'll flash up yellow to say it's in pairing mode, and soon enough it'll link up with the brain here. It says that the controller is connected at the top. So now if we swap over the USB-C cable from the brain to the controller here, and if we look over here we can see that the controller and brain are both paired. So now if I change this to say controller, and I click download, and then run, and now it says controller on the brain. So we downloaded our code wirelessly without anything plugged into the brain. Last thing I want to talk about this video is how to drive the robot around using the controller. To do this, of course, you'll need a robot to drive around, so instructions can be found in the description below for how to build one. I recommend the basic base bot, but you can also use the speed build if you're short on time. So if I take the robot right here and then select drive from the home menu and then click run, I can now drive the robot using the controller. 
By default though, the controls for the robot are tank controls, meaning that the left joystick controls the left wheel and the right joystick controls the right wheel. This can be a bit unintuitive to drive. So what I like to do is actually go outside into the controls option and then change it to something more intuitive. My personal favorite is split arcade two, meaning that the left joystick is gonna control moving forward and back and the right joystick controls your steering. So just like that, forward, back, and then the right one turns left and right. And then you can drive all around with the robot. And with that, that's just about it. If this video helped you out, don't forget to click the like button to help others find it. And feel free to subscribe so you can stay up to date with any new videos. Thank you so much for watching.